morning, folks, and welcome to another edition of City Hall Live. I am Joe Abeta, and today's guest is an old friend of mine. Her name is Christine Chavez. She is the city's water conservation manager. Christine, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm doing great. Thank you for coming on. Great. Thanks this so much. This is kind of weird, you. right? Because we were in yearbook together and that <laughs> and type of thing, and now we're <laughs> and now we're here doing TV shows for our community. I know that's funny. Pretty cool, saving water and you know video and stuff. But thank you, uh, thank you for coming in. I know I know you're busy. It's a busy time of year for you. It is. Yes, it's uh, watering season, right? That started May first, correct? May 1st, yeah, it's, it's our high demand season. All of the irrigation starts up, but it's also um, Earth Day, all of the school celebrations. Mm -hmm. It's the end of the year, so we're wrapping up all of our school activities. Um, today, we have staff out in the watershed conducting tours. Okay. We have staff members at the wastewater treatment plant oh, wow. um, working on uh, tours there. We have work at our demo garden going on. Um, we have today's show, so are, are the, <laughs> it's like are the, are the, very busy. You were mentioning the watershed. Are there are those public tours that people can sign up for? They're not. The watershed is still closed, okay. um, but we have partnered with the Santa Fe Watershed Association. Okay. And so they have an education program that we sponsor and work with them on. And so we, I think we have about 60 watershed tours throughout the school year. So we have about 30 that we're wrapping up right now. Yeah, <clears throat> I, I've been out, I, I was, uh, you know, I started my, my beginning, my humble beginnings here at the city uh, with the whole toilet retrofit thing. We'll get to toilets in a I little bit, though. That, yeah. But yeah, so it's like that was a long, long time ago. But I remember one of my highlights was because um, I never did this as a kid growing up here go out to the watershed. It is like so cool. It's beautiful. It is. It's, it's very quiet, you know, yeah. and, and just uh, uh, it's so cool that it's so close to us and it's so accessible. I know it's not public, but. Um, just seeing the beavers, you know, the beaver dams out there and the wildlife. And then we have our two big reservoirs out there. And, um, and I've seen them both empty, completely empty when they were redoing the, um, or one of them was empty, I think, when they were doing that, that tunnel uh, upgrade or something had. And we went, it was like a, something from War Games or Terminator or something that we'd go <laughs> down. But, but yeah, it's just, a, it's, it's a great thing. And that's part of your job where, you know, you have access to that if you have to, because you're in conservation and you kind of, you have to give reports and stuff like that, right? Well, I mean, for us, there's no better place to teach kids about water oh, conservation yes. than out in the field where they see the reservoirs mm -hmm. and they understand where that water comes from mm -hmm. and they, they see Canyon Road treatment plant and they understand that connection. Mm -hmm. So for us, you know, building our presentations into those environments is, is way more successful. Yeah, and they're able to see it actually say, yeah. hey, this is, you know, when you waste water, it affects this. Right. right? So that's pretty cool. Okay, so... <laughs> watering season starts. <clears throat> um, so, uh, watering season, you're only allowed to uh, water at certain times, right? And those times are 10 a.m. No, no, no. 6 p.m. to 10 a.m. in the morning, correct? Yes. Yes. And what's the reason for that? <laughs> what's the reasoning behind that? Well, I think that everybody can understand that if you water throughout the middle of the day when it's really hot, you're going to just mm -hmm. have more evaporation loss. Mm -hmm. um, so the plants are really going to take in the most water in those evening hours or early morning hours. So it's just a way to be more efficient with your mm -hmm. irrigation and, um, you know, just to try to, to do the right thing. It's really, and you still see a lot of people irrigating throughout the day, yeah. um, you know, because sometimes you just do it whenever you have time. But really, the ideal time to get water to the plants is in those evening hours. Yeah, and, and, and an example would be, um, like, I laid sod in my backyard a while back. It's a long time ago. <laughs> I, done it. I figured that was a big mistake. Oh, no. <laughs> but I had no, um, I had no shade or trees or anything no. to, to keep it from, you know, to have like off during the day. Right. So the sun would be going straight across my backyard the entire time. Yeah. So what that meant was I needed to water all the time because the heat was just evaporating the water. I wasn't getting any kind of return for the water that I was putting into it. And eventually I just went to gravel, back to gravel again, which was I fine. Know, it's a lot so less. To maintain. Yeah, it's, yeah it's, it is a lot <laughs> to maintain. And then you can buy the fake turf. You know, at Costco right. or somewhere now, it's so affordable. But, yeah. but yeah, I can see that. And 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 also, there's there's rules now that if you cannot water between the hours of of 10 a.m. and 6 p.m. because you can get cited for it, right? Right. So from May 31st until October 31st, okay. um, that's our enforcement season. So you're not allowed to water between 10 and 6 p.m. 10 a.m. Mm -hmm. 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. um, you're not allowed to have water running off of your property. Mm -hmm. um, if you have a broken 
sprinkler head. I mean, it needs to be fixed immediately. Mm -hmm. So we really kind of try to tighten down on water waste during yeah. this time of the year. Yeah, and that's another thing you brought up. You bring, do you still use the term fugitive water? We do. Okay, so yeah. fugitive water is water that, like when you're, if you're taking a walk and your neighbors and, and they're watering their grass and, and the water is going onto the concrete, that's considered fugitive water. Correct. Yeah, so, so, so let's, let's just, because I know that you guys are looking at a different approach now as far as, um, it's always been an educational uh, approach to letting folks know, hey, listen, you know, uh, let, let me show you what we, these are the rules and this is what happens. Um, you know, right? I mean, that's the approach you guys are taking as far as enforcement goes, or is there, there's, there's chances or there's no chances, or how, is, how does that work? Well, so the, the water conservation program has been in place for quite some time. Yes. <clears throat> the enforcement program specifically was put in place when we were in a drought, when it was really, really dry, yeah. and the city was in, in serious. Like National um, Guard was all yellow. Yeah, it was, it, yeah, was, it, was pretty, it was pretty serious. Yeah. <clears throat> so at that time when the program was established, it was, it was people going out looking for any type of water waste, being very, very strict, mm -hmm. um, citing people, um, you know, writing them up. The reporter was putting, publishing them in the newspaper, mm -hmm. you know, the top water users. I mean, it was, it was pretty serious. Yeah. Um, the city of Santa Fe, though, has done really such a great job in, you know, really becoming more conscious of mm -hmm. the water use here in the community. I mean, it's a very, very, you know, proactive community. Yes. You don't see a lot of lawns. You don't see a lot of plants that aren't native. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of overhead spray. Mm -hmm. A lot of people are on drip. And so yeah. <clears throat> the communities, <clears throat> my allergies are like that's killing a, me. That's all right. Um, the community really takes a, a really active approach to that. So we're really looking at changing the enforcement program and adapting it a little bit differently. Okay. You know, we have different tools now. We have the new Ion Water app, which allows customers yes. to know yes. themselves whether they have a leak mm -hmm. the, on their property. Mm -hmm. A lot of times during this time of the year, it's associated with the irrigation system. Um, so we don't even need to go out and patrol so much anymore because if we get a phone call on water waste, we're able to see with our metering system now mm -hmm. whether or not that's true, whether or not that's occurring, whether it's associated with the leak, how much water's being used, whether it's from 10 to 6 p.m. You know, so the technology has really brought us pretty far as far as what we can do from our own, you know, desk. Gotcha. Um, yeah, I, I, I remember back in the day of, of people getting phone calls when we were doing the WaterWise program. And that was the yeah. reaction to the city uh, in the state that we were in back in 2002 with the big drought and everything. Right. And we would have people calling all the time, you know, uh, you know tattletailing on their, on their neighbors or on a, on a business or whatever. Right. And, and I think from that, it's become more of, it's a way of life now not the tattletaling, but, but, but the conserving part of it, right? Right. Because we, there's all these measures that were done, and so people are just used to it now. It's just part of life of, as far as we're not going to water during the day. Um, we're going to be more uh, conscientious about what, what kind of landscape we're going to put out there, and, and uh, we're going to contribute to it. And because of that, right, we, um, I don't know, what, what, are we ranked in, as far as water conservation communities, is there like a ranking or something? I know that we're, we're, pretty, we're pretty good, right? We're really good. Um, a lot of the cities in the Southwest, <clears throat> you know, they use much more water than we do. Mm -hmm. We started at 197 gallons per capita per day, I think in 1997. Wow, and, 197? Um, 197. Holy moly. And I'm so bad with it. I mean, I'm pretty sure that's No, no, no. <laughs> you put me on the spot. Yeah, no, no, no. I think, but it, it shows that where whatever that number is, I, I'm sure that I had some, con I, I contributed to that because I would get plastic uh, bags, uh, 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 trash bags, and cut them in half, and then you do slip and slide in my front yard. But oh, that's so old school. We used to do that. <laughs> Remember that? <laughs> yeah, right? So, so, it's so yeah. hot outside. That was when everything was cool. I know. Right? You yeah. run through sprinklers yeah, in the middle would, of the day. Was, yeah, it was a big <laughs> so thing. Different. Yeah. It's different now. Yes, it is. Um, my daughter would freak out if I turned the sprinklers on. I yeah. Have her run yeah. So what are you She'd doing? Like, What's a sprinklers? That's right. <laughs> we That's have right. one. That's right. <laughs> um, yeah, it's different. You know, definitely the community. I mean, they take the responsibility on themselves. Like you said, uh, you drive through the city, you don't see overhead sprinklers. Mm -hmm. You don't see a lot of fugitive water. You see people really trying to make the right decisions, and people who move here from other places where they're used to the, you know, where there's a lot of water normally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, they're trying to learn. They're, you know getting involved with the Master Gardener program. They're calling us. They're using the um, resources from the Office of the State Engineer. So there is, everybody knows that water is an issue. And um, yeah. 
So because of that, we're, we're really looking at changing our enforcement program this okay, year. Okay. Um, because of that technology, there's no need for us to be in a vehicle driving around all day looking for, you know, violators. Um, certainly there's a better approach. And so it's, you know, we're visiting businesses, you know, door to door, um, getting them signed up on Ion Water, you know, talking to residents who have concerns, getting them set up on Ion Water. Mm. There's a threshold that you can set up on that app so that if there's continuous flow above that set limit, you get notified by email or okay. a text message. So even if you're out of town, if something weird is happening at your property, you know. So you don't have to wait for the bill, wait for the damage to your property, have to come in and apply for the leak adjustment credit. You have complete control. That's um, pretty cool. Fingertips. Yeah, it's, it's come a long <clears> way, hasn't it? Well, another awesome thing okay. about the Iron Water app is that everyone gets really concerned about the tier two water rates in the summer uh -huh. because you know there is that threshold. If you go over ten thousand gallons, you're you know you're spending three, four times as much money on your water. Oh bill. wow! Okay. So to stay out of that tier, all you have to do is budget your water. And so if you know that your garden is taking, you know, I don't know, 500 gallons a week to water mm -hmm. and you're getting close to your billing cycle and you know you're near or might be near that 10,000, mm -hmm. then you can just set back, you know, give yourself three days to the billing cycle resets and then start your irrigation again. And then you've completely kept yourself out of that. And that, that, that's automatically on there. That's, I mean, you I have mean, to the, the, be... The, 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 the on the app you have access to that information you have access you can That's see cool. your daily use your hourly use your monthly use your annual use and compare it to last year's I mean it's and continuous flow would just show up as water running through the system the whole time so even if it's not at your threshold amount you can kind of see okay nobody was using water at midnight so something might be happening it might be a toilet flapper or something very or small. Or busted pipe or something like that. Yeah that would definitely spike and we could see that. So let's just so there's people watching this, hopefully, and uh, uh, they say, hey, I want to know where to get that app. How, how do they go about getting that, this app? So it's a free app to all city customers. Okay. Um, you just uh, you can go to our website, SaveWaterSantaFe.com. Okay. It's on the city's website as well. Okay. Very, very easy instructions. It's about a three or four step process. Okay. Um, but if there, uh, if you know anybody has any questions, especially about setting up the threshold um, amounts, you can always give our office a call, and it's nine five five four two two five. Okay. And um, you know we we do that all day every day. That's so. awesome. That's great. Yeah. Okay. So. Some e events coming up, let's talk about those. You were talking about Master Gardening. Yeah, we've really established a great working partnership with the Master Gardeners. Mm -hmm. um, I, I went through the Master Gardener program um, down when I worked in Las Cruces. Mm -hmm. And so they're New Mexico State University Extension agents. And so it's interesting, it's like a 12 week program and mm -hmm. you spend half a day there mm -hmm. uh, once a month. And it is so technical. Show that I, I honestly did not think I could even grow after I got out of that. I didn't even think I could keep a plant alive because you look at the soil, you look at the insects, you look at the weeds, you look at the diseases. Come more you aware look, of what's going around. Yeah, it's like a very technical program. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, from just buying the plants in front of Home Depot and watering them and forgetting about them, now you're like, oh my gosh, is this plant in my zone? Is it in the right soil? Is the pH the right? Yeah. Uh, at, at the right level, is yeah. it? I mean, it gets crazy, but. It was such an amazing training, and so when I worked, then I moved up to Los Alamos and worked there, mm -hmm. and got involved with that Master Gardener program. So my first thing when I are you I, a Master Gardener? I am. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. Oh, it's it's a wonderful program. Okay. And um, so the Santa Fe Master Gardener program uh, is led by Tom Diaz. He's the extension agent from New Mexico okay. State. And so every week they bring up um, a professor from New Mexico State that talks specifically about you know, whatever it is, weeds, you know, yeah. pollinators. I mean, it's, it's a pretty intensive program. But anyway, we've all gone through the program. Um, everyone on my staff has gone through the program. I've got two of my staff in the program now. And um, we just partner with them on a lot of the things that they do. And so we got so lucky because we have a demo garden. I don't know if you remember the demo garden in front of our office. I, th I think I do. It was kind of going in yes. around that time with Dan Ransom. Yeah. Um, we have quite a bit of land and we have quite a bit of weeds too, but we're working every day. I, I mean, I probably pull out 200 baby weeds. It's oh, wow. amazing. I mean, it takes You still get the spray and spray it on there? No, <laughs> Joe, you don't use spray. <laughs> get the Roundup. <laughs> no, Roundup. <laughs> That's okay. like a bad word. Okay, 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 okay. okay. <laughs> but um, so the Master Gardeners came in and they helped us plant the main um, area in front mm -hmm. of our office. So. Mm -hmm. 
we went out with them. They helped us amend the soil. They helped us bring in mulch. They identified which plants we should try to find. Mm -hmm. So we did. We planted them. I mean, it was in the middle of June last summer. That's planted, late, right? It's very late. Okay. But, you know, the city process, it's not easy to buy plants in the I gotcha. city PO. It's kind gotcha. of rough. I got gotcha. you. Um, but yeah, they went in the middle of June. We hand watered. We, you know, babied them. They made it through the winter. We're bringing them back to to life now and um, so it, the, you know we're really excited it's in its beginning stages but I think it's important for people to see it at the beginning stage and this is happening this weekend right they're gonna be coming out this weekend and it's yes. for the public right it's for the public okay. so the master gardeners have like a series of workshops and one of them is to tour the mass the the demo gardens at our um, place. Um, so it's a Saturday morning from 10 to 11. At San Mateo at the Water Conservation Office. So that's, we have right? a set of demo gardens in okay. front of the main building. Okay. But the Water Conservation Office is just, it's an annex off that building. We have no physical address, but it's um, in that shopping center just right down the road where yeah, by, uh, Diamond Paint. Yeah, and, and the restaurant, uh, what's Midtown it? Bistro, Midtown Bistro. Midtown Bistro and stuff. Verde. Yeah. If you just yeah, go Ralph's down that Trauf, shopping. Uh, Ralph Ortiz's T-shirt. T-shirt place. Yes. Yep. He's a guy, great guy. Oh, he is. I love Ralph. Me too. Yeah, he's a good guy. I like him too. Yeah. <laughs> but um, yeah, great neighbors. You just drive all the way down and you'll see the city building on the right and you can't miss the gardens. Okay. But one other thing is, so we had a, the native plant group come out and plant our native plants. Okay. But then we had the Cactus Rescue Project approach us. They're also master gardeners. I didn't know cactuses need res rescue. Well, apparently so. the Choya, it's, there's a whole story behind that. Okay. I mean, it's an interesting project. It's a cacti re cactus rescue project, but they have great people involved on their spare time, volunteering hours to just propagate cactus, um, get wrap clippings, head, take it away. Around their, their oh, they have like these metal globs and like armor it looks like. Uh -huh. but, but they planted just okay. free of charge. They were like, you've got this great space, let us plant a cactus garden. And we were like, okay. So That's pretty cool. They came in, they, it's a beautiful garden. It's got rock structures and then they have all different types of cactus and they're all blooming now. And you can see them. You can see them If you also. come this week, okay. And then they did another pilot plot just in the same area, just in our same area, where they used recycled asphalt, which mm -hmm. is, um, it's a product that nobody knows what to do with, mm -hmm. but they used it as mulch in the cactus garden. Oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. I didn't either, but if it works, then it would be a great alternative to some of the medians that we have in the city because we haven't watered it or maintained it at all, and it's beautiful, and it's blooming, and the flowers are coming out, and so. That's pretty cool. So we're super, super excited. Um, you know, we, our enforcement officer, Mario Torres, mm -hmm. um, was also hired for his irrigation experience. And mm -hmm. so <clears throat> he's um, worked on the gardens. We're all helping him maintain the weeds. You know, it's been a big, big project. But that, that's pretty awesome. And th that great. happens, the master gardening uh, seminar, would you call it? Or would be, yeah, the, is this Saturday? This Saturday. Okay. 10 to 11. 10 to 11. All right, awesome. That, I know. Th that's great. Yeah. Real quick. Um, running out of time, but I was gonna ask you, uh, re rebates, is there still rebates going on at the Water Conservation Office? There is, we have we have a really big rebate program. Okay. We offer rebates on toilets, washing machines, dishwashers. Um, we have pretty extensive rebates now on um, rainwater harvesting equipment. Mm -hmm. So um, rain barrels, we only give $12, um, but if you have a cistern, it's 25 cents per gallon of capacity. So it you know, does offset the cost a little bit more. And there's other bonuses if it's sized correctly or if you plumb it back indoors um, for toilet flushing. It gets a little like bit more, uh, the more complex it does, the more reward. The more incentive we gotcha. provide, right? Awesome. And we have a new rebate now. It's a laundry to landscape gray water rebate. So okay. if you ever want to retrofit your washing machine so that that water goes out into the landscape instead of into the sewer, then we can offset the materials wow. for that too. Wow. Back in the day, that wasn't accepted with us, but then it was, <laughs> you know, because I think it was just like, it, nothing was, there wasn't like a roadmap. And, yeah. and, and I know you guys, speaking of roadmaps, five-year plan coming up? Yeah. Okay. So we just underwent this really wonderful process with the community to get public input for our five-year water conservation plan. Okay. So it's due 2020, January 1st, 2020. Okay. Um, we haven't written anything. We didn't even start on a draft, and we just started all of these public input meetings. And it's not the typical meeting where the city gets up and presents, and then the few brave souls get up and give us their input. It was very different. 
we would give one background side of information and then everyone would break out into tables. We had moderators, a lot of volunteers who helped us. Mm. And then we would pose a question out to the group and then everyone would document their answer to that question mm. and then they would talk about it collectively. Oh, so there wow. was, we've collected thousands of pieces of information and it's all on our website, savewatersantafe.com. Okay, great. So you can see what everybody's thinking. If you haven't had a chance to participate in the meetings, you can answer the questions there or offer any input that you have for the plan as well. Do you feel based on the meetings that you've done so far that they're, that uh, the picture is becoming clearer as far as what the five-year plan is going to be? Well, I mean... Like, is it kind of unblurring itself slowly? A little bit. We're really trying to separate the public input like into very common overall themes, mm -hmm. you know, like food or outdoor use or gotcha. education. You know, we're trying to sort of umbrella it under those big topics. Mm -hmm. um, but we just received such great feedback and support and everyone was really happy with the process. And I think they're really encouraged by the idea that we're collecting input before we write the plan mm -hmm. and that that's what's really guiding all of the goals in it. So we just, you know, it's been really, really great. That's great. So one last time, Christine, uh, real quick, the, um, they can get a hold if they have any questions about what we talked about today. They can call the uh, number at the Water Conservation Office, 955-4225? Yes. Okay, great. Awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you to yeah. you and your staff out there because I know this is a busy season. This is the in season for you guys. It is. It's very busy and stuff, but you guys are always out there educating our, our youth, educating our adults on how to be uh, good uh, water, water stewards in our community, and I want to thank you for that. Thank you so much, and thanks for, for letting me talk about all the stuff we've got going on. Yeah, no, absolutely, anytime. Open invitation. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and folks, thank you for watching us today. This has been City Hall Live. I want to thank Christina. I want to thank Adrian. I want to thank Leanne over here to the left of us, who's just kind of just chilling <laughs> out here at the, at the uh, community gallery, beautiful community gallery here down here at the Convention Center downtown. And uh, folks, have a safe week. Have a great week. I mean,